welcome to the Stately Tutor! Come on in! So, welcome to our newest DIY project. This is going to be our live-in flip. It, we are calling it the Stately Tutor, although it's not very stately yet, but it will be. So this is the foyer, foyer. foyer. Um, we're going to be doing some board and batten all the way up the ceiling. It's nice and grand in here. Maybe some unique wallpaper. Definitely gonna be doing a lot of DIY in this space. I think it's a really special space, but it needs some work for sure. So this is where we enter. Then this way you come into the first family room of sorts. It's got these huge high ceilings. Really excited about that. We are gonna be removing some, lots of walls. Hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yep. Hopefully. But this room is great. It's so tall, it's really cool. But let me show you the part of the house that we were first really excited about. This is the great room over here. So our goal is to combine these two living spaces into one great room which I think will be so beautiful. We're gonna try to keep it kind of traditional to that English style tutor while also making it modern. Gonna be doing a German schmear to the fireplace, um, keeping the beams natural, but obviously um, lots of new paint and flooring and all that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> For flooring, we're gonna be using a um, utility grade hardwood, which is like basically all the pieces of hardwood that are not good enough to sell. And then we're gonna be making them usable. So we're gonna be showing you how to have really beautiful hardwood for very cheap. So we'll show you how we do all that. About $2 a square foot. So if you guys remember, we actually got this place off market. Um, I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw somebody in our neighborhood was selling some mid-century dressers. And so I was like, let's go pick those up. Those are really nice. And when we got here, I realized it was the house that I love most in our neighborhood. It was this old Tudor house. It's my favorite house in our neighborhood. And I was so excited to see the inside. Um, and when we walked in, it was very obvious that she was moving. So we kind of got to talking with her about um, just her life and what was going on. And she shared with us that she had already moved and that she was hoping that this place would go to a family, someone who would really love and appreciate it. And so Jamie and I wrote her a little note and kind of told her that we would really love to live here with our family. So she asked us if we would pay the appraised value. And so we agreed upon that number and that is what we did. So we're gonna head this way into the kitchen, but remember our goal is to take down these walls or at least open them up a lot more because they're pretty small right now. So now we're gonna go this way. There's a little half bath right here. We may take it out as well because as you come into the kitchen, you'll see how small it is. So this kitchen, uh, when we toured the house and looked, uh, we thought that the island was pretty wide. Uh, once everything was kind of cleared out of here, it's actually only this width of one cabinet. So this is a pretty skinny kitchen, which we don't love. So we're gonna try to make some changes. Over here's our dining room, um, which they added some cabinets to. But we wanna try to combine these two spaces somehow so that we have a giant kitchen. It's gonna be tricky because there's some walls that can't be moved, but um, if you come this way, in the dining room, we're hoping that maybe we can take this wall out, put another beam in here, and then actually have this become our main kitchen. So I hope you can kind of visualize that. Again, we don't even know which walls we can take out yet. We're gonna to have to talk to a contractor and figure all that out. It's gonna be expensive, but uh, we think this house has a lot of potential and I think it'll definitely be worth it to change it to its ideal layout. What do you think? <laughs> Love it. It's the best part of the house. No, uh, stop. But Jamie, don't. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, it's time to get rid of this stuff. Let's go. Outfit, link in bio. Check it out. <laughs> for our dumpster to come. It should be here sometime today, but we couldn't really wait apparently. So we just started piling everything into this room. 
So that's what we're doing. And then as soon as the dumpster comes, we will bring it all right outside. So we've been ripping all the curtains down in this house because when we walked through it, every curtain was closed. It was really dark in here. So I'm anxious to get these last curtains off the wall and it's been so much brighter in here already. I'm so excited. One, two, three. Ah! Ugh, I Ah, quick. Ah. Okay. Ah. Let's get out of here. Get out of the dust. Alright. Yeah. Woo! Cleanest dumpster I ever saw. One of my secrets is to use a flat shovel for getting all your tack strip and staples up. It's a lot easier than taking pliers and pulling each individual one, so check it out. So, my dream for this house is to actually make this front family room our kitchen. This is, um, a newly, this is a newly developed idea. Yes, Jamie's not as sold on it, so let me know in the comments below if you like it. But this room is really tall, and it's also just a lot bigger than our current kitchen. And our current kitchen would become like a sunroom of sorts overlooking the pool. So that's my goal, is to make this a really big grand um, appliance spot. And then right here, matching up with the bay window would be a big island. So similar to our house now. And then, and then it would, this wall would be gone, right? Yeah. These walls would be gone. So it would be connected to the great room. And I think it would be really great. So again, we're not for sure doing this. This is just a dream that Sarah has. I think it's a pretty cool one though. We just don't know if it's feasible in our budget or if it's even possible from a construction standpoint. So we're gonna have to see. But Jamie did look in downstairs and the main drains are closer than we thought, so it might be possible. But we do need to get our contractor in here to double check everything that we're not gonna be messing up our house. But I think that a newer trend is that kitchens are becoming more and more just like a part of the living space. I think when this house was built, kitchens were supposed to be kind of tucked in a corner like you don't really use it except for like making food. Where now it's like you come in the front door and the kitchens are just very much a social area. So to connect it with this great room, I think just makes more modern sense. Mm -hmm. And we really loved the feel, we really loved the feel of our last house, yes. which had that same kind of open concept feel. So if we can do that in this house, that'd be amazing. So we'll see. Yeah. Our old house, you would walk into the house and you would be like right in the kitchen, which would be like a main gathering space, which was connected to the living room. So you could all kind of hang out in both rooms at once. And it just felt very like inviting in a good like entertainment spot. So that's my goal for this room is to become the kitchen. Right now it's filled with trash. <laughs> so. Yes. We gotta go put this in the dumpster. When we first saw this house, obviously these stairs were carpeted, so we weren't sure what was underneath them. My dream is to have wood stairs. I think it's so pretty, especially because it's the entryway. It's like right what you see when you walk in. Um, but this house was built in 79, so we thought it was probably just plywood underneath and that we'd have to replace all the stair treads. But after doing some investigating, it's actually nice rounded stair treads right here. So that was kind of a nice surprise. We don't have to replace all these. We can just sand them a little bit and stain them and they'll be really pretty. We're gonna do something with these as well. I'm not sure if we're just gonna paint them black for now or replace those with something maybe like wrought iron, but I need to price that out. So I'm not sure yet what we're doing with those. Nice, go for it. This? Yeah. Let's see what treasures we got in here. I already emptied that side off. Oh, okay. Yee! Hey! Ice cream. ice cream, let's go. Hey! <laughs> no, 
Now this side, um, there's definitely like pretty grimy in here. I don't know if you can see. It's nasty. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do some cleaning for you. Just a little. The worst part about this dumpster is that once uh, it got full enough, we had to close the back door, which meant throwing things over the top. It's very tall. I'm like six feet tall, so it's like like an eight foot tall <laughs> dumpster. So that was pretty hard. Um, but we figured it out. We just used ladders and that's a pretty full dumpster right there. It's gonna have more in it too by the end. All right, bye bye. <laughs> it was a good work day. We got a lot done. Um, we're gonna see how full we can get our dumpster. But at this point, it's definitely looking like we're gonna have to get two. Bummer. We'll see. It's just part of the game. There's lots of stuff here. All right guys, today is a big day because our contractor officially told us that these walls are gonna be able to come down. Uh, he's gonna put some beams up for us, but we first have to take off all the drywall and stuff for him to be able to measure. And we're gonna kind of get an official glimpse of what it's gonna look like having this be more open into the living room, mm -hmm. which in my head, I think I can picture it, but today we're gonna be able to actually like see it, visualize it. So I'm so pumped. Let's get to it. some hard work <laughs> but I like we were actually only doing that for like 15 minutes yeah so. a lot of progress I was surprised that there's insulation on that wall yeah why would that so that's be? interesting I don't know maybe I don't know you can already kind of tell it's opened up a lot you can kind of visualize what it's gonna be like I made a mess awesome. but I'm glad we did this before we moved in just from a dust aspect mm -hmm getting all the dust out. We are taking out this whole corner and then these two walls. There'll be three beams that are going in here. We got a quote for between five and $10,000 for those beams, including labor. So- It'll be double that probably though. <laughs> but it is going to transform this house into what I think matches the outside, just very grand and beautiful. I think it's totally gonna be worth it. I would rather spend money opening this up into this great room and having it just feel like really luxurious in here, I think it's totally worth every penny. Yeah, you can kind of picture it all open here with this corner gone, it's gonna be amazing. So, um, I wanted to show you guys because originally I talked about doing the kitchen in this room because of the high ceilings and kind of connecting it to the great room. And a lot of you thought that was a really dumb idea. Thanks for letting me know. Um, but what I think you guys are missing is that you walk into this foyer here from the outside, yeah. From the outside, you're walking in, and this is like your entryway, and then you come into the kitchen this way. I think a lot of people thought that you just walk right into this room, but there is like a flow to the house now. Yeah, and then that, the dining room's still over there, but. Yeah, yeah, so I think it'll totally make sense, and we are doing the kitchen in this room, so. It looks good. <laughs> you look good. It doesn't look so good. Yeah, we're definitely making this house worse and worse as each day goes forward but eventually we are going to rebuild it so have faith it's going to be beautiful all right so as far as what we're doing for the rest of the day i'm going to continue to use this tool to kind of cut an exact line of drywall because uh, right now it's really rough and we want to be able to patch the drywall later so i'm going to cut some straight lines across the top here so we can take this out and see what the beam looks like currently um, our contractor wants to see what's in the ceiling up here as well um, so I'm going to be taking that down and then obviously cleaning all this up, which is going to take a while. Three days later. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a quick update. Our contractor has officially ordered the beams and he said it's possible to do so. I'm trying to save as much money as I can by doing as much of the demo work um, because this is primarily a labor intensive job. What you're paying for is the labor. So 
Um, by taking some of this extra drywall out, we can just get a full view of what actually is going to happen here. So let me show you. So we are getting a 20 foot beam that will go from there all the way to the stairs to the basement over there. So that's the biggest beam. Uh, then there's going to be a 14 foot beam that goes from there to the main beam. And then I forget how big this one is. There'll be a beam that goes from that corner down to there as well. So up here painting is Sarah. Sarah, when do we move in? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're still trying to figure that out. Got some work to do. What are we going to do? We're probably going to be All putting nighters. mattresses in the bedrooms over there. Yep. My mom came down to watch the girls and I'm painting, cleaning. We're going to get some, yeah, area rugs and mattresses and sleep in this mess. So it's going to be an adventure. That's what we keep saying. Good morning. I just dropped Ruby off at school and Roxy off at grandma's and it is time for an update progress video. So I'm going to take you guys inside, show you what we've been working on. We've been working our butts off over here and we got some good stuff to show you. So let's go inside. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. Just mudding our beautiful walls. <gasps> you mean no walls? Or no walls, actually, yes. Uh, <laughs> Surprise! What do you guys think? They're Pretty gone! Woo! It's amazing <laughs> here. Let's, uh, let's show them around. So if you guys remember before, when you walked into this entryway, there was a wall here with like a smaller doorway and it went all the way here, and this was its own like separate room, and then that was its own separate room. <laughs> so we'll show you some clips because it's kind of hard to explain, but everything is pretty much gone. We had to put three beams in to make sure it's nice and sturdy, um, but it looks awesome, and like it feels so just like grand and luxurious in here, even as is. So, um, yeah, it's looking good. We are standing in what is going to be our kitchen. Um, we will show you our plans for that, but this originally was like a family room or an extra living room, um, but we really wanted it to flow into this great room. So that's kind of the feel here. There still is like a hallway of sorts because the beams still had to be set on something. But I kind of like it because it like separates the spaces without it being totally close up. So another wall we were able to cut open is actually this wall into the dining room. Uh, we just opened it up more. There was actually no load bearing support there. So I cut that out myself. But that made a huge transformation as well because there was really just a small entryway um, with a door height uh, walkthrough. So it looks totally different and we're super happy with the results. Having these walls removed was probably the most expensive and also the biggest undertaking of uh, this whole project. So we're super glad to have it behind us, but it actually ended up being a little cheaper than he originally quoted because he finished earlier. And I like to say that was because I was here helping, <laughs> but um, no, while he was here, I was helping uh, pull wire. There was a lot of electrical that needed to be moved, which was a big part of the cost. Um, so mm -hmm. um, I put some cam lights in, or at least the wiring for them, um, helped pull wires, and then I was able to cut out that wall uh, over there myself uh, while he was here too. So yep. um, we saved some money that way, and we're super glad to have it behind us. Another way we're saving money with this whole kitchen, living room remodel, I was by hanging drywall ourselves. So my brother actually came over last weekend and helped me hang all the drywall, uh, which was a huge help. But hanging drywall and mudding is kind of an intimidating thing to think about. Um, and most people just won't even attempt it. Uh, but after you do it a few times, it gets easier. So I mean, worst case, you wasted, you know, maybe 50 bucks on drywall and mud, then you have to go hire somebody. <laughs> but it's really not, not that expensive of a, of a mistake. So you should try it. It's all about the prep work. So. Yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to try any things. And there's one other huge way we saved money. I'm excited to show you guys. Let me show you again. <laughs> this is our new cold air return. It's an old grate out of a 1910 house um, from a city nearby. But on eBay, these cost like 400 bucks mm -hmm. because of their, they're so big, they're made out of iron, cast iron. Uh, but I found this one for 85. So. Um. Uh, Oh, on Facebook Marketplace, Favorite. yes, of all places. <laughs> um, but what that will allow us to do is not have to pay an HVAC person to move all the cold air returns that were in the walls. So we'll just have a hole in our floor and it'll kind of have that old world charm that Sarah's going for. After Jamie is done mudding, next is painting and then floors and then kitchen. So 
we have our layout kind of planned as you can see here. Maybe, we keep changing our minds. Island will be here as big as we can get it. So kitchen is still a little ways out, but we need to know our layout soon so that Jamie can figure out all the electrical and plumbing. So let's go check out what else we've been working on because we have a lot of different stuff going on at once. So let's go show them. What you working on? I'm priming the stairs, which is a big job, but I'm using sticks, which is, my brother's a painter and he suggested this as a primer. It's like a bonding primer and helps stuff stick really well. So we first started with the deglosser um, and then we're gonna also, sand, we sanded it, we did the deglosser and now we're also gonna do this just to make sure that the paint sticks really well. I've been told that a sock works well for painting spindles, so I'm gonna try it. A little old dirty baby sock here. Let's see here. Wait, can I help? Wait, what are you doing with my sock? Uh, <laughs> no. I am painting with it. See? <laughs> what? Uh, How does it work? It kind of works. Daddy. It's kind of dripping. I don't know. Daddy, <laughs> I don't like you doing this. You don't. Yeah, everybody doesn't like me doing this, so I think I might go back to the brush. Cause Bummer. It's not working that well. <laughs> Seems kind of silly. Yeah. Daddy, that we'll kind of silly. What are you doing? Painting, painting, painting. <laughs> this is tedious. Yes. Very. Why are we doing the rails already? Well, carpet is coming tomorrow. <clears throat> and I don't want to splatter paint everywhere after carpet's end, so it's definitely better to do it now. <laughs> yep. You look like you need some coffee. All right, so my biggest project lately has been these stairs, um, which I painted black. They're pretty dusty right now. It's actually like a very dark, dark gray or a light, light black, whatever you wanna call it, but I think it's the perfect color. It's so pretty. So now I'm working on sanding the stairs, which is a little bit of an undertaking. There's just so many like nooks and crannies, um, but then we're gonna stain the stairs natural wood so the reason I chose black was just because I wanted to make it a little bit more modern, but I like the curve of this old traditional staircase. So it's kind of a nice mixture of like modern with traditional and I'm so happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to see the end result. I'm also gonna be painting these backs black as well, along with sanding everything. So it's still kind of a big project. I didn't know how big it was until I got started. Oh. What you doing? <laughs> Removing wallpaper is not it? easy. Got the steamer, got the scraper. <laughs> it's a lot of work, but I'm doing it. Nice. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> That one. Yeah. Ooh, thank you. So another big thing we've been working on is actually just removing all the wallpaper in this house. There was so much of it. Jamie's mom has helped me a ton with all that. It was all up here in this whole room, this whole room, the bedroom. It's really everywhere and I'm still not done. So that's another kind of thing we've been working on that has been taking some time, but we're getting there. Jeez. Would you swim in there, Ruby? Mm, no. You in it? Oh. Yeah. It's yeah, that liner's bad too, unfortunately. Yeah. It's coming all off the side. Bummer. This pool has been a big pain. Um, we knew the liner was bad, uh, but in order to measure for a new one, we have to have it clear. It's blue, but it's not clear, so. That's been another project I've been working on. It's taken a lot of my time, actually. So, if you have any tips for me, that'd be great. Nope. What? Grass? Nope. Thanks for helping paint, guys. <laughs> so the first thing that we do when we paint is usually use a product called Kills. If you guys have ever used this stuff before, it's awesome. We use it to cover, like, if we want to paint any wood, um, because there's tannins in wood that can leak through latex paint. Um, so we start with that as a primer. It also will cover up like stains, like smoke stains or just dirty, grimy walls really, really well. Um, and then for walls that aren't so dirty, we're using just a regular 
primer. So that's what I'm starting with. And then after this, we are going to use our High Hide White by Valspar. That's our favorite white to use. So this is what a tannin looks like coming through. See this kind of yellow and it cracks. So that's what happens when you use latex paint over uh, natural wood or anything that is stained. Um, it's not gonna cover it very well. Even if you did 100 coats of latex paint, it still could come through. So that is why using kills is important. It'll cover that right up. Need a ladder? <laughs> Almost got it. <laughs> I think you need a ladder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, is it is that is that good? Good job. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for helping. Alright, so next we're gonna make sure all of our nail holes on our trim are filled with caulk. So you can see after we prime, there's like a lot of little nail holes and stuff from the old curtains. So basically just take some caulk, squeeze it out, and then dab it with your finger. <laughs> Pretty easy. So official. Yep, very official. Make sure it's nice and covered. So after that, there's a very crucial step, and that's taking a baby wipe to it uh, and wiping it. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna get fingerprints and smudges and stuff like that. The baby wipe does really well at just smoothing it out. So make sure to don't skip that step. So this beautiful crown molding we put up is actually three pieces of trim. I didn't realize that when I took it down, but when we put it back up, three pieces of trim. So there's a lot of caulk here. It was just natural wood before, but since it's gonna be white, you'll see all the cracks if we don't caulk. So it's gonna take me a while, but it's gonna look really good. And then you can't forget the baby wipe. Crucial. <laughs> baby wipe is crucial. Don't forget it. So whenever we can, we try to use our sprayer. Uh, we can generally cover an area a lot faster and also it just looks a little bit more professional. Um, so that's what I did yesterday. I have these walls all primed and I have a coat on. It only took me about a half an hour for each coat. We did this room and also the master bedroom. But what's great about sprayers is that you can actually just put uh, them into a five gallon pail and paint five gallons at a time. So you don't even have to stop. You just keep going until the five gallons is gone. Um, I went through about five gallons of primer uh, for two rooms. So I put it on nice and thick, but we had lots of smells and water stains and things like that to cover. Smells a lot better in here now though. We are rolling the great room. We couldn't spray in here because we wanted to keep these beams natural and also the fireplace. It would have been just way too much to tape off. So um, parts of the house we had to spray, which is awesome because it's like makes super quick work, but parts of the house I am rolling. So working at night a lot and right now during the day while Ruby's at school, um, I decided to paint this strip of cedar going around because I felt like it stopped your eye from like going up to the ceiling. So Jamie sanded that and skim coated it for me, which he was a little bit against. But once we caulk it and paint it, I think it's just gonna look a lot more seamless and bring your eye like all the way up like it's kind of meant to in this room. Well, another thing I asked Jamie to do last night, which I was a little bit worried about, but he agreed, is to scrape the popcorn ceilings in this room. I just, I just hate them so much and it's gonna be a lot of work. But long term, I think we're just gonna be a lot more happy with it. So he's gonna spend some time doing that. I feel a little bad, but I think it's gonna be worth it. So encourage him in the comments. All right, so I, at first I was against taking the texture off, mostly because um, it would be such a big project. But I think I agree with Sarah now. Um, we just have a lot of textures going on with this wood that we're trying to paint, uh, the trim and stuff like that. So I just think it'll be a lot cleaner looking uh, without the texture. So it's actually not too bad to do. It's probably going to take me like two and a half hours to take it all off. So then I have to skim coat it twice with mud, but after that it'll be ready to go. <laughs> okay, so scraping the ceilings was kind of a nightmare. Uh, someone in the comments, I forget who, but they suggested buying a wider scraper, which I did. Uh, but that didn't really do the trick. I think if it was real popcorn ceiling, it would have gone faster. But this tool actually worked better because it had just more strength and more, it was more rigid for scraping. So it took me a, a long time. How many but, hours? Mm, four. For all that, that's not so bad. Four to six, maybe. 
So four to six hours sounds pretty reasonable for scraping, but that means we're only halfway done. We still have to do the skim coat of drywall mud. So after scraping it, it kind of left still a little bit of a texture. So uh, we really want it to be like real smooth. So I'm going back in a minute to do two skim coats of mud. So I'm using this tool, drywall mud knife, uh, and then sanding between each coat. So uh, it's probably gonna be a 12 hour project. But it's gonna look good. But it's gonna look really good. You may think that that won't make a huge difference, but it, it really will, um, especially when you're in the space. It might not look much different on camera, but in person, it's gonna make a big difference. So that's what I'm telling myself anyways. So, you can see yourself. Yes, so um, we're gonna keep going on it. And hopefully this, is, this room is the last room before we can start doing floors. So I'm hoping by Monday we can start floors. That's the goal. And we don't have to live like this. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing now? Seeing so my first coat of mud off. How's it look? Pretty good, I think. Hard to tell. Favorite thing. You're so uh, close, though. Least favorite thing. How are you doing? Oh, I'm very tired. <sighs> Uh, this and then that one, when I'm done. Okay. Should they attempt this at home? Mm, no, it's probably, probably not the safest thing to do. No, I just meant in general, like... This is a sturdy ladder. No, top, not the ladder, like the spackling, uh, removing of what you're doing. It's a lot of labor, more than I thought. <laughs> so. I would say one star. <laughs> okay so i just finished sanding the stairs i think it was like probably a good 12 hours of my time a much bigger project than i imagined i had to get like between all the little nooks and crannies it took forever but i am finally ready to stain i think and i'm super excited i saw someone on instagram mixing stains and I really loved this mixture so I'm going to test it out first to make sure I really love it in person but it is going to be half early American and half weathered oak so I've never mixed stains before so we're going to do a few different swatches and see how it goes I'm going to try it on our these are our hardwoods if you guys saw that video this is like unfinished oak which our stairs are actually pine so it will look a little different, but I'm gonna try it on this first before I try it on the stairs to see how it looks. Okay, I'm gonna try this one by itself first before I mix anything. This is the early American to see how it goes. So I really wanted to do um, a natural, like lighter stain on the stairs, but because there was a lot of um, sanding and stuff I couldn't get it perfect it just wouldn't look as good so we're gonna stain it a little bit darker and I think it's still gonna look awesome so this is just the early American it's kind of a nice light medium I could always add more to make it darker it's so pretty I really like that so next I will try doing half early American half of the weathered gray because I think the weathered gray is going to take away any of that like yellow undertones that I really don't like. All right, so now I got my bucket so I can mix them together. So I'm going to dump this whole, they only had tiny ones of these guys. So I'm going to dump the whole thing in. Eventually I will dump all of these together, but for now I'm just going to do a quarter of this. I think I can figure that out, huh? Who, who believes in measuring? It's fine. We're really official over here. All right, let's see how this goes. So I did do a weathered gray stain by itself. It's hard to even tell a difference. It's a pretty natural looking stain. It just kind of grays out the wood a little bit. It's really pretty, um, but I think we have to go darker. Okay. So this is the mixture, and I will show you guys when it dries. It might look a little different. And then this is just the early American. So it is slightly more grayed out. Um, I don't know how I feel yet. I'm gonna let it dry and then I will let you guys know what we decide, but 
at this point, I think we need to go darker. I don't know. I don't think this is going to be dark enough. One second. Okay. This is dry now out from out in the sun. At first I wasn't sure there was a huge difference, but there definitely is. And I'm super happy with it. So this side right here, this is the early American by itself. This one is just the gray weathered oak by itself. And then this is the 50 50 mixture. So it's not a huge difference from the early American, but I think it like took out some of the yellow tones, honestly. So we're going for it. Jamie thinks it's dark enough for our stairs to kind of cover some of those imperfections and still be light enough that like it feels modern and stuff like that. So my next step is to mix all of this together so it's a true one on one to one ratio mixture. So we're going to do a full, um, what is this, quart of this guy and then four of these little pints in my bucket here and mix it really good so it's a one to one ratio. And then we're gonna get started on the stairs. So Jamie is over doing the last coat of mud on the speckling and I am going to start staining the stairs. Jamie had the brilliant idea of doing every other stair first so that we can still use the stairs for until, until I get there. So I'm gonna start and see how this goes. Ooh. So All right, so we have stained this one, this one, and that one, and we are having major issues because they all look a different color. This is old oak, apparently. This is old pine. Looks pretty bad for some reason. And then that is new pine. So we got like a yellow undertone going on, a red undertone, and a green undertone. So, looks pretty bad, don't you think? <laughs> yes. And I worked pretty hard to get here and I'm kind of sad. So, we gotta figure something out. Stay tuned. This is not going very well. Pretty disappointed. We got a lot of different colors going on even though the, it's the exact same stain. So this is gonna be the color of the hardwood. So it'll contrast nicely, I think. I think it'll be okay. Um, I just had my heart set on like lighter wood stairs, but that's just not working out. So the choices are to either stain it really, really dark and hopefully some wood grain still comes through, but then they all match in color or just paint it. So- but Then when you wanna paint the, the toe kicks like white or lighter? Oh. I don't know. So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. I'm Which pretty, option? Pretty discouraged. Dark stain or paint? This living room's not too cozy, is it? Nope. Well, I think it's time to put some floors in, don't you? It's flooring day! Thank you. So what 5,000 pounds of oak hardwood looks like. How does it work out? So this is utility grade or cabin grade oak. Uh, we paid $2.12 a square foot. It is unfinished oak, so we will have to sand it down and stain it ourselves. That's part of uh, what you're paying for or not paying for. It is going to have a really cool old world feel because there's some knots in it, there's a few imperfections, but for about a quarter of the price, we're really um, gonna have a really cool and unique look. All right guys, so what I am doing now is going through this giant pile of our hardwood floors. I have to sort through and make sure all the pieces are usable. So if you guys have been following along, you know that our hardwood floors are only $2 a square foot for this cabin or utility grade oak. Um, but part of the caveat is that of that is that there are a lot of pieces that might be imperfect or totally not usable. So like this piece, for example, has a knot in it, which is totally okay, but it does go through the back. So what we do is just tape that up and then fill that in with epoxy before we sand it and then it'll be nice and smooth once we sand it. Um, I'm also making sure that all the pieces have their tongue 
in their groove here. Some of them are missing that. So those pieces would not be usable. And overall, just looking for massive imperfections that I don't really like or that just aren't usable. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through and sort these into piles of long, medium, and small pieces and make sure that they're nice and square by using this tool. That is part of kind of the process of doing hardwood floors like this, but I cannot wait to show you guys the finished product. So I'm gonna get to sorting. So here's that knot, super simple. Just gonna go ahead and tape that up so that when the epoxy is poured through, it doesn't seep into our subfloor. Get stopped right there, because this is the side you'll see. And then it'll be nice and smooth underneath. So that's all I'm doing. Well, Sarah's out in the garage sorting through a lot of those boards. I'm in here uh, doing some prep work with the subfloor. So one thing we're doing is actually trying to get rid of a lot of the squeaks because the hardwood itself is gonna maybe creak a little bit, so we don't want more creaks than necessary. So what we're gonna do is walk around until we find a squeak like this. You can hear that. Uh, and then we find where the uh, joist is underneath the subfloor. Uh, they're pretty e easily defined, usually because there's nail holes already. Um, and then we're just going to screw down uh, to draw this down tight against the joist and then hopefully get rid of the squeak. So let's see if we can do it. One other thing for prep we need to do is get our first line started. We need to make sure it's perfectly straight. So this great room is our biggest room in the house. Uh, so we're going to start in here, but I basically I need a straight line to go all the way across here to nail my first row to. So uh, it's a little bit tricky to do, but it's the most important thing. So what I'm going to do is measure from this wall out to this corner, and then keep that measurement all the way across. I'm also going to shine my laser level. We might even do a chalk line just to make sure we have a perfectly straight line all the way from that room across to this one. And then we're going to start working this way. Um, a straight line matters because it's visually going to, you're going to be able to tell, especially by the time you get to the end of the house. So the first row needs to be perfectly straight. Yeah. Chalk line. Two. Three. We're going to screw down our two by fours flush with the chalk line. Uh, Lowe's wood is not the most straight, so I'm going to have to kind of screw it and then bend it as I go to make sure this wood is perfectly straight with the chalk line. So, might be a little tricky. So I have my straight line all set up and I'm ready to start nailing. So, um, I bought this nailer, it was about 150 bucks. Last time I borrowed this tool, but since this is such a big job, I decided to buy it and then I'll probably end up selling it when I'm done. Uh, but, it comes with this mallet. Uh, this metal side is for tapping your wood into place. Notice I said tapping, not hitting. Um, and then the rubber mallet part is actually what hits the back of your um, tool, which shoots the nail into the wood. So that's kind of how that works. The other thing I'm going to be doing is gluing each piece down. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do hardwood floors. Most of the time people put down just like a vapor barrier piece of rolled paper. Uh, but because these subfloors are the kind of cork style, they're not as strong. Um, gluing down is just going to hold them into place better. This is also has a ba vapor barrier in it. It's called Bostwix Best. Uh, doing hardwood floors is definitely a two-person job. Uh, Sarah is watching the girls right now, so right now it's a one-person job, but it's really uh, makes it a lot easier if you have one person uh, bringing in the wood. I have a shorts, mediums, and a longs pile over here, so they can be like feeding you the wood and also maybe even applying the glue uh, while you nail them. So, but for now it's just me, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to put a nail about every six inches. So, start in the middle here. You get the idea, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now that we got to this bay window, we have to start cutting angles. And I don't know where I saw this trick, but it's pretty cool. To cut your angle, all you gotta do is put your piece up that you wanna cut, and then take another piece, 
with your straight edge and then make sure it's flush against the wall and then just draw your line. And now, that's my perfect angle. So I'm gonna cut that and nail it in. So we have our cut, we're just gonna put it in place and see how it looks. Perfect. Day two. Start day two. How's your back? It hurts already, so. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah. We're trying to cut around this fireplace, and it's a little tricky because it's not a straight line. So, I've got this handy little uh, contour measuring tool of sorts. And so, what we do is we uh, push it up against the brick um, So it gives us a perfect outline of the uh, cut we need to make so I just need to line it up on this board here And then in theory If I cut that It's gonna fit perfectly flush up against these rocks. So we're gonna go cut it and see if it works. A dry fit here and see. Looks like it's gonna match right up, so I'm gonna go ahead and nail this in. So you may be wondering why we didn't just start at this far wall and work this way. Uh, that's because walls aren't necessarily always square with the rest of the room. And we have two big rooms that we're combining, so it's really important that we have our most visible part of the room to have straight floors. So that's why we first laid this 2x4. Uh, you saw that earlier in the video where we started with the 2x4. Uh, now we have enough flooring laid where we can actually start working the opposite way. So we have this stuff, it's called a spline. And it basically turns the groove side of your hardwood floor into a tongue side. So uh, let me show you. This is your hardwood floor that has a tongue side and a groove side. Um, so basically the spline will go in the, the uh, groove side and then now it turns into a tongue. So then I can shoot my nails down through that. So. We're going to put the tongue along this whole edge and then we can work that way. Uh, okay. Doesn't look dented, so that's a good sign. Yeah. Thank you guys. It's gorgeous. It's here. All right, so we just got our stove. It's gorgeous. It's perfect. We did not think it was coming because there's like a huge appliance shortage going on, and so we bought appliances thinking maybe we'll get them, and that actually came. One of them. We got two more coming, so we'll see if they come. And we had to order the stove from Lowe's and then the dishwasher and refrigerator from Best Buy. So that's how we... According to like who had it sort of in stock. Yeah. It's It was a mess. And so we got the stove. We'll see if we get the other ones. Mm. Here's hoping. But also today, someone's coming in the evening to buy our entire old kitchen from us. Countertops, cabinets, appliances, everything. So... Yeah, I listed the cabinets on Facebook Marketplace and someone reached out and said, hey, are you selling anything else like appliances or whatever? And I said, yeah, we're kind of trying to get rid of the whole lot. I just haven't listed it yet. And he asked me my price and he wanted to talk to Jamie on the phone. So they talked for a little bit mm -hmm. and he's was super pumped. He's putting him in a new house, right? Yeah. So that's going to leave us without a kitchen for a while. As you guys know, in order to finish our hardwood floors, we need to first install them all completely and then sand them down and finish them. So we can't start installing the new kitchen until the old kitchen's gone and the floors are done. So today we're not only gonna rip out the entire old kitchen, but we're gonna try to set up a makeshift kitchen for you guys. Uh, we for don't them. Know... Well, for us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for us, not really for you guys. Um, but we thought we'd bring you along on the journey because we don't exactly know how we're gonna do it yet. Let's figure this out. All right. <laughs> What do we what do we need those for? I have 
have to pack up my new house. <laughs> so the kitchen we unpacked temporarily. So I have to pack everything back up so that we can move the kitchen. But I ran out of boxes. So we gotta get some boxes to pack up our kitchen. What you thinking? Well, hey, what's up? Tub and faucet kit. Well, how much do you think it is? 179. We're looking at a wash basin to wash dishes. We're probably gonna do paper plates, but we need to wash our pans and stuff, so. On their website, they had one for $54. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. 179. Oh, this one says 89. Hmm. Oh, well, question is. Can we do without? Can we do without? How fast can you finish the floors? What's our timeline? What? Um, two weeks, but then we gotta put cabinets in. You gotta do the plumbing, electrical. Yikes. So we're not getting the wash basin? Nope. A different Lowe's has one, so if we get desperate, we can always go there. But the, pro the problem is the sink in our camper, the drain's not hooked up yet. So <laughs> otherwise we could use that, but. We bought this house before I could finish the airstreams. <laughs> you can Comment see- Comment below if you think we're a mess. Considering? Considering. So our camper fridge is the, like a tiny, tiny mini fridge. And I have to have on me at all times, 2% milk and whole milk. And it would be so obnoxious to have to buy like a tiny milk, like I every day. I know. So we might just get this for the garage. Really? And then just keep it or sell it when we're done. What could we sell it for, you think? I don't know. Two, probably at least 250 You think? Oh yeah, if you, if you keep it nice, right? Yeah, that's I mean, true. it's brand new, so like... Yeah, and then if we... I would pay $100 to not have to like constantly go, go grocery shopping every other day. Oh, I don't want to spend 350 bucks today though. I'm this. What should we do? All our popsicles. Ice cream. See, this wouldn't be an issue if the guy coming to take our kitchen wasn't taking our fridge as well, but. Yeah, but he is. I don't know. This See, is a good deal, but it's still $350. If we can sell it, I think we should get it. Or we could keep it for like our garage fridge. People have garage fridges. Came in for a wash basin, leaving with a uh, mid-size bridge. <laughs> Let's go. Good work. Oh. Need some help? <laughs> Master fridge mover, I think. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> flooring, more flooring, <laughs> unpacked mess. Yikes. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Pumped about our purchase? Yeah. Look how many gallons of milk I can fit in there. Right there, in the door. Girls love milk. Alright. Let's see what we got here. Hey. Yeah. Good right. work. I'm gonna need your help with this one, I think. Okay. Woo! It's heavy. Trying to demo carefully since we're selling these cabinets, where usually we just smash stuff out. These are nice enough to sell, so it's a little more tricky. Well, it takes a little longer. Yes. But we're getting there. How's your cheek? It's all right. I keep smashing my fingers. Yeah. Now that in this cabinet, so 
have my little tester here. I think I'm safe. All right, I'm gonna cut the wires now, ready? Such a dad. Yeah, There's plumbing in these cabinets? No, I'm, well, yeah, in the sink. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Ready? Here. We got a lot of work ahead of us. You guys come in at 6.30 to get these? Yeah, it's one right now, so. Oof. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh. The wire. Here we go. This is the strangest island I've ever seen. Very strange. This is a corner cabinet they had in the middle. Very strange. Look how much bigger in here it looks without the island. <laughs> wow. It's going to make a great sunroom. Right. Oh! Ooh. You okay? Help. All right, bye. Taking the door off. Why? So that I can unscrew this from this. All right. Good. We're on the hardest section here with the heavy L-shaped countertop and all the plumbing and ductwork. So I just got the dishwasher out and I'm working myself this way. When's the guy coming? Uh, like in an hour. Yikes. So we'll get it though. So moving all of my food into here, pastas, smoothie stuff, snacks. Where did all this food come from? All right, I have one, two, three, four, five of these and they expire in five days. So it's also summer, yikes. Someone help me, what should I do? Actually, First person to tell me what I can make, what recipe I can do with all of this, wins a uh, something. Why do I always feel like we got no food? Look at all this food. Oh yeah. yeah. Pizza. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yum. Fridge. Prep fish. Perfect. Mm. Got my like spices and oils in here. Flour, microwave, air fryer, fridge. Yep. And then grill over here. <laughs> Pizza man. Uh oh. All right, and then the kitchen continues in here. Got all my food, 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 food. And then another fridge, which has like fruit and things in it, not too much. And a freezer with nothing. Coffee, dining table, slash mess. So this is what we're working with. Here's our stove for when we cook things, you know, not too often, but it does happen. And that's the, uh, that's the rounds. Washing dishes. <laughs> baby tub? Yep. So this is Ruby's baby tub because at our old house, we didn't actually have a bathtub. So I bought this like collapsible baby tub to put in the shower and I would like fill it and yeah. So this is now our sink um, because we didn't want to spend $150 on a wash tub at Lowe's and it works fine. So I just put my dirty dishes in here and I'm just, just still washing. Oh, yeah. It's 
So quick reminder that this room is going to be the new sunroom. Um, so this is where our old kitchen was, like our fridge or stove. Um, but we are gonna be putting in a mini like kitchenette here. Um, you know, with a fridge, pool stuff, pool snacks. I'm hoping to get uh, like bubble water on tap. So still gonna be kind of a little kitchenette um, with cabinets all along this wall and then some boho-y more sunroom-like stuff. And then our kitchen is in this room. So we got our stove. We're just waiting on the rest of our appliances. And then obviously Jamie has to move some plumbing around and I don't know gas <laughs> other things we'll probably hire a contractor for that um and then we need to get our cabinets in here so that we can order um countertops but she's coming along nicely look at that this will be kind of like a pantry of sorts probably because we have another coat closet right here so and then i plan to make this dining room really like moody and kind of funky and fun so but I want to have a longer big table because we've always had like smaller tables and I want to be able to host and have big dinner parties. So it's looking good. Look at that gorgeous wood. Oh, look at this piece. Oh, so pretty. Obviously when you sand it, all this stuff comes off. That's just some like excess glue, I think. Pretty awesome. Jamie and I debate about these cross these diamond windows a lot because there's a lot of them in the house, but some of them are square. <laughs> and then like you go over here and you have some di more diamond windows. There's some upstairs too. I like them. I think that they're kind of Tudor style-esque, but Jamie thinks that there's too many of them and they really easily pop out. So we might be replacing some of them and get going square and then keeping some diamond. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think. We're kind of going back and forth on keeping the aesthetics of the Tudor, but also wanting it to be modern. Um, so should we keep some of them? Should we get rid of all of them? What do you guys think? This it, wall is going to be a new wall here. Um, and then that will make our mud room a lot bigger or our laundry room slash mud room. So this will be like two or three feet wider. So that'll be a really nice coming in area from the garage. Plugged with leaves, so stop back in there, spit out. <laughs> <laughs> happy Father's Day! Yes, happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> All right, guys, we got our liner in yesterday. You can kind of tell it's still filling up. It's been going for about 24 hours now. It takes a long time to fill up a pool, but it's looking good. Jamie went and looked at pink boat paint for our slide. <laughs> so might do that, that would be fun. But this thing's getting ready to swim in. Got a little soaking spot over there. They put that in originally, it's kind of fun. There's little jets and stuff. Nice big uh, step area. I love this pool. Jamie's like the most beautiful diver in the world. I can't wait to watch him dive off of that and I'm planning on learning myself, so. And then over here is our gazebo you guys saw in our last video. That whole project, pretty fun. We've been using it every day for sure. Grass is starting to come back in. And then here's our still kind of a mess of a yard, but we're, we're getting there. We're gonna take all this out. This is gonna be like a new big platform 
like a rectangle instead of jagged. And then there's going to be stairs up here, platform, stairs up to that, platform. So all of this will kind of be gone and then it'll just be one giant kind of overlooking deck overlooking the pool this way in our view. So, and then lots of grass areas still. So, um, and then that water fountain actually works. That's a feature, um, but we need to clean it out and I think there's a hole in it, but it does actually work. So, and then eventually we'll get new siding and we definitely need new windows eventually, but well, we won't get new siding. I shouldn't say that. We'll be painting it because um, it's like a beigey yellow right now. We want to go more of the creams and the browns or the tans. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We are about to use our pool for the very first time. Jamie is cleaning it. If you guys remember, it was super green. We got a new liner and whoo, it looks good. Jamie's got to fix the slide still because it's not hooked up, but she's looking real good. Oh, sorry. Hello. <laughs> Next we are headed inside to finish sanding and staining the floors. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming up, but we are going to be enjoying this all summer long. All right, so one of the best things you can do for your flooring to get it to look pro is to cut underneath all your door jams. So um, if you were to try to just measure and cut around this, there's going to be small gaps. So the easiest thing to do is actually cut the bottom of the door jam and then slide your flooring under. So what I did is I held my piece of wood up and I drew a line and then took this tool and cut all the bottom of the door jam off. So now when I slide this under, it will fit perfectly like so. Gorgeous. So I'm gonna glue this down and get it nailed in. Uh, and I'll show you on the next one exactly how I do it. So the first thing we did after installing the floors is Sarah and my mom went through with um, epoxy resin and filled all of the knot holes with uh, the resin. Um, and what that does is kind of smooths everything out, makes it a little bit more seamless and prevents toe stubs and things like that. So let me show you what that looks like. If you come down here, this was a knot and it was filled with, uh, it was a big old knot that sunk down, but it's filled with that epoxy resin. And then after sanding it, it's nice and smooth. It feels really good and looks really good too. How's it going? Good. What are you doing? Hello. Basically, I have a giant orbital sander here. Oh. Sanding the force. So, cool. it's a big project, but it's going pretty well. So, let's see that thing work. All right. All right, I just finished sanding everything. It took me about four or five passes, but it looks amazing. Now I just gotta vacuum all this dust up. I'm gonna take my shop back and go up over it twice and then use tack cloth to wipe up any excess dust uh, so we can get to putting down the poly. All right, so now I'm installing my sealer, which comes before my poly. Um, this just seals the color of the wood and helps the poly do its job, which is protect your wood. Uh, this just kind of seals it in. So doing this first, I'm using a brush to edge it down here, and then I'm using a T-bar uh, to spread it. So it's pretty simple, but it, and it goes really quick. So. This is the Bona Traffic HD. 
Um, it has a hardener that you add to it and it only lasts for four hours after you add the hardener. So we did two coats of this and it is really intense stuff. It feels really hard and smooth and hopefully we'll not get any dog scratches or anything like that either. So. so as Jamie mentioned, the finish was expensive and obviously renting the sander, it all kind of adds up and it added about a dollar per square foot to our flooring here. So we spent a little over $3 a square foot in this uh, for all this flooring. So still pretty good, but we did do it all ourselves and it took us a lot of time. All right, so today we are getting rid of this big ugly deck in our backyard. It's sagging, it's rotted, it just needs to go. Um, and we are going to be putting a beautiful gazebo here, a nice shady spot to eat and hang out with friends. There's gonna be a beautiful fireplace we're putting in. It's gonna be awesome. So as much as we love our backyard, one main issue we have back here is that there's not any shade for the afternoon sun. So what we're gonna do is rip out this deck that is very bowl shaped and just odd. And we're gonna be pouring a cement patio here and adding a nice gazebo with a fireplace. It's gonna be beautiful for having people over and also eating dinner and things like that. Yeah, so the aesthetics back here right now are not super great. We got some uh, dishes behind us here for TV. <laughs> Uh, a lot of rotten wood. Have so much going on between the different tiers and decks. This one is like totally rotten. So we are going to rip this whole deck out and level it out underneath. And that down here is where our patio and our nice gazebo and fireplace are gonna be um, perfect for eating dinner and things like that. So I really want the vibes to be just very um, matching to our house, which is that old English Tudor style. So we're gonna have some greenery going on and just a cozy, nice romantic place. So we will show you an inspiration picture on the screen right here. Um, it's also like overlooking the woods over here. It's just gonna be such a cool hangout spot. The pool is over to my left here. So you'll kind of have that in view. It's just gonna be such a good spot. We'll show you on the screen the exact products that we got from Sunjoy that we are going to be putting right here, but they're so beautiful. I'm really excited. There we go. Nice muscles. Ooh. Yeah. The big there one. There we go. All right, check this out. This post support post isn't even, it's rotted all the way through, just wiggling here. Um, I think at one time they had a hot tub and it just sank this whole deck, but uh, now it's just totally rotten. Ooh. Look better to you? <laughs> Beautiful. Yes. I, love I think it's looking it. better. It's more flat under here than I thought too. I love what you've done with the place. Gotta get those plants before. Oh. Get the rail over. My basil. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> this deck was built pretty poorly, actually. This is the main beam across the middle, and there's only one two by ten or two by eight. So the plan is to get all this trash out of here tomorrow, and then we'll have a clean slate and kind of see what we're up against. I'm hoping we can just uh, pay a concrete company to level this hill out a little bit for us and then pour some concrete. Um, we're on a little bit of a time crunch here, so I'm hoping we can get that done. Otherwise, we're going to have to dig it out ourselves and lay pavers. So um, let's hope I can find someone to do it for a reasonable price. Well, the good news is that Sarah listed the wood on Facebook Marketplace and someone came and took it for free for us, so we didn't have to take it to the dump. The bad news is we couldn't find a contractor to do this meant for us, so we decided to try it ourselves. Now, I wasn't about to break my back uh, by digging dirt for a week straight, so we decided to rent a dingo. Most people don't realize that anyone can rent one of these excavators, and that's pretty inexpensive uh, for the amount of time it saves you. So I spent about 250 bucks for this thing for four hours, and it saved me about a week's worth of digging and breaking my back. Sometimes it pays to work smarter instead of harder. Heavy? Yes. One down, how many to go? 148 now. 
Are these lighter than the pavers, sand, or whatever it's called? Same, 50 pounds each. Well, let's go. <laughs> you want some help? Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All our other loot, looking good. Well, we're making our first row of brick, which is the most important row. Put down paver base and then in a backfill with rock for drainage. But the first row is the most important and then it'll go quick after that. So make sure it's level. Make sure it's level, yep. because it's easier to just dump them, like so. <laughs> yeah. And then the reason you put rocks behind this is so that in the winter when everything freezes, it doesn't push this wall out. So it's just good for drainage. Okay, so now we're gonna glue our top row with this landscape construction adhesive. Um, and then we'll set our top pieces on and it's going to look great. But you didn't know. That's for cutting your glue tips. And we go like that. Alright, let's go. So I've never built a curved retaining wall before, but these cap blocks are giving us a little bit of issues. So uh, we chose a few spots to cut them down with this angle grinder. Um, so I'm cutting off a piece of the corner and then hopefully it'll fit a little better and look a little nicer, more finished on top. So. Pretty good. A little better, not perfect. But better. Yeah. What are you doing? Getting rid of this. We don't need it. We've been talking about that since the day we bought it. No, I hate these things. Whoa. Ha. Where are you putting those? I don't know. Trash can, I guess. <laughs> I think I learned that I don't really like gardening. So you're just doing wood chips? Yeah. You could put some stone statues in there. <laughs> Next came prep for the concrete, and this step was a lot more work than I thought it would be. So even though I didn't really know what I was doing, I felt confident because I had the guidance of Sarah's dad, um, and I had watched a lot of YouTube, so I kind of knew what the process was supposed to look like. What's the pickaxe life? It's hard work. I don't know if concrete is my thing. Good. All right, it's 9 p.m. We are not done. <laughs> Almost. Almost, kind of. We're having some issues with some sand. Yeah, I don't even know. We're having issues, but. No, we're good. <laughs> Good. Concrete's coming at 11 a.m. We are renting a concrete buggy at 10 a.m. Will we get it done? We'll see. We got some more work to do tonight. <laughs> the sun is officially set, so we're working against that. We're good. <laughs> so for concrete, we rented the uh, buggy. It was about 150 bucks. 
Uh, and we also had the concrete delivered, but uh, that is really the only way we could have done it ourselves. And Sarah's dad came down and helped us. Um, he's had experience laying concrete before, and he did a really nice job. I'm super grateful for his help. This, this is really good. This is way better than I've ever done before. <laughs> Like, it looks like, like butter. It's like your butt right there, soft and smooth. <laughs> okay. You say good job, Papa. I said good job, Papa. I said Papa. I said. Papa. I said. <laughs> All right, so this morning I took the forms off our concrete, cut the lines, it's looking really good. Uh, and now I'm assembling our SunJoy gazebo. So, uh, so far I've just had to use a Allen wrench, uh, so it's been pretty easy. Um, there are a lot of steps, so I'm probably gonna be doing this most of the day, but um, excited to see how it looks. It smells really good, because it's made of cedar, so. Assembling the gazebo wasn't really too hard because all the holes were pre-drilled and pre-cut. Uh, it was hard to stand it up on, on its own, so I had my mom help. Uh, so thanks, mom, for your help. I gotta trim out the edges still, but it's looking good. Here it is, the big reveal. Let's go. Woo! What do you think? <laughs> It took us about 11 days of really hard work. We were out here every single night till almost dark. We did concrete for the first time. We moved a lot of earth. It was a huge project, but it turned out awesome. And we've already used it a ton. This project had a lot of different firsts for us, uh, things that we didn't initially know how to do and we just figured out uh, while we were doing the project. So um, one of those is the curved retaining wall. Mm -hmm. I've never done a curved retaining wall before. It's always been a straight one. So mm -hmm. uh, that was a little bit intimidating, but you know what? We just figured it out as we went. I mean, it realized we had to end up cutting those blocks like we did and it looked great. Uh, the other thing was concrete, which was very intimidating. We had someone quote us like $3,500 to, to do this project for us. And they were also booked uh, way far out. We wanted it to be done sooner so we could enjoy it out here in the summer. Mm -hmm. So we just decided to do it ourselves. And it cost about 800 bucks plus the $150 tool rental. But I think it looks pretty good, don't you? Yeah, I mean like the lesson to be learned here is that like, you just gotta learn, you gotta try stuff. Like even big projects like this are really intimidating and we watched a lot of YouTube and we read up on a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and it might not be perfect, but like, it looks really good. I'm, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Sarah's dad was a big help. He has yeah. done uh, concrete before. So him and Cole, thanks Cole, came out <laughs> and uh, helped us do it. And it, it looks great. So yeah. um, don't let big projects intimidate you because you can do more than you think you can. So we've been working really hard on our kitchen over here. It's really starting to come together, as you can see. We have our giant island we just built, um, and we're starting to come down to some of the design choices. And so Sarah's gonna kind of walk you through why exactly we're gonna be painting our brand new kitchen cabinets. All right, so let me show you what we have picked out for cabinets. These are from Menards, and they are awesome because they are flush mount, meaning that they will actually sit inside of the cabinet. It'll be super seamless, really pretty. They are Ikea style, so we had to kind of put all these together. Um, so that takes a little bit of extra time, but they are actually really nice cabinets and I really love this trim work is um, simple, but still like has a nice little detail to it. I just think it's really pretty. So the reason we are painting these green is because everything in this kitchen is pure white. We have white appliances, white cabinets, and then we picked out our countertop today too, which is this white quartz marble. 
Um, so that'll be delivered in a few months. But the reason I wanna paint these green is because I wanna add just some character back into this house. I wanna add some wood accents, terracotta, stucco, um, and a little bit of color. So the reason we didn't just go out and buy green cabinets is because that would be very expensive and it's a pretty long wait list. So we're doing it ourselves. So we're gonna paint these green today with our favorite Beyond Paint. Box cutter. Kid scissors. scissors. <laughs> Nervous? Yes. Me too. A little bit. <laughs> Brand new cabinets. We're gonna spray them. Let's go. Safety first. Safety first. Yep. First thoughts. Love it. It's gonna be sweet. We decided to spray the paint on our cabinet doors rather than rolling them, just to ensure we had the smoothest finish possible. This meant that our spray booth had to be an outdoor MacGyver type setup with styrofoam cups. But the weather was nice and calm, so it actually worked out really great. Looking good. First coat. All right, I'm currently working on installing all the doors we painted. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, it's taken me a while, but got them all laid out here. They're looking really, really good. Um, but I'm going through each different hinge pack, making sure it's the right hinge pack. I mixed a few of those up, unfortunately. Uh, we also have this uh, pantry doors, which look great, except when you look, they're, uh, one of them's upside down, and I'm trying to decide which one is upside down. Do you want the taller ones on the bottom or the taller ones on the top? Got to figure out which doors go to which drawer um, and install them all. It's, it's a little bit of a process, so I'm going to get to it. It's a stencil for knowing where to drill the cabinet holes. So it's kind of custom made, but it's working pretty well actually. So one there, one there. So then in theory, I drill my holes. Look at that gorgeous pull. <gasps> looking good, yeah. We got all these ones on, so they're looking real good. Oh yeah. <gasps> so pretty. A little bit scary. All right, so we're just about done installing these cabinets and I'm so glad we made the decision to paint them with Beyond Paint. Um, remember we got these stock from Menards, uh, but they're, they're kind of Ikea lines, so they look nice and modern when they're shut. They're kind of flush mount. Uh, which I liked, and then they're all soft clothes, which is great. Some really nice features like um, slide out drawers, stuff like that. So uh, this is gonna be our microwave location, our hidden microwave location. So now that we kind of are starting to put our kitchen back together, we have a lot of fun details coming up that I'm really excited about. Right now our kitchen looks pretty modern to me. Like even the green is a little bit modern and obviously our appliances are like out of a spaceship, but we are going to be adding a lot of really warm textures back in, some nice like old looking wood, um, clay type pottery tile. So I'm really excited to kind of add the character and charm back into this house. I don't plan on keeping it as modern as it looks now, but it's a good like um, starting place to just feeling nice and fresh and new. This is the faucet I've picked out. Isn't she pretty? Oh. And, oh, and I went with these poles over here. They're pretty simple, but I liked that they had a little bit of roundness to them, but they still felt like modern because there's like a fine line between looking like from the 90s, but wanting it to look old with charm, but not look like outdated. So this is what I went with. Today we are 
are doing an update on our stately tutor project come on in so we're gonna start out here with our gorgeous new front door isn't it amazing Jamie drove to Chicago for me it came out of an old house it was white so he had to strip it down he sanded all these little tiny crevices it took forever but it is like my favorite piece of the entire home when we first bought this home I told Jamie that I loved everything about it but I wish it had a curved front door and Jamie was like we can do that and look at it I want to tell them I want to tell you guys just how perfectly it turned out so can I tell can yeah, I yeah, yeah yeah okay so This door was the exact width we needed. Literally when I put in the jam, there was no shims. It was just perfect to the old width of the old door. We also had some siding in the attic we found. So it couldn't have gone better. Uh, we made an oak threshold, which is pretty cool. So it kind of <laughs> naturally leads right into our oak flooring. I think it looks great. It does. Come on in. Let's show it off. Come yep. on, come on. It was definitely a labor of love. I spent probably at least 15 hours, maybe 20 hours stripping this door of the white old paint uh, and it looks great now it looks like it's meant to be here it looks like it's always been on this house i agree come on in if you guys remember this entryway started off with tile down here carpeted stairs and a wood banister so we have really done a lot just in this entryway and it's coming together i'm still searching for a few perfect pieces but we got this beautiful wallpaper ripped the old wallpaper out put in my new wallpaper this is Rifle Paper Company wallpaper. I will link it below, it's beautiful. So come on in this way. If you guys remember, there was a large wall here and here, lots of walls everywhere. So my dream for this house is to actually make this front family room our kitchen. This is, um, a, newly, this is a newly developed idea. Um, and now it's open. So this is our kitchen. It's not finished. We still have a little bit of work to do with tile, vent hood, and that kind of thing. But we got our countertops in recently. <gasps> Look, whoosh, it's pretty. What's but the whoosh for? The waterfall. Oh, okay. Whoosh. Okay, gotcha. Sound gotcha. of a waterfall. Okay. <laughs> the kitchen used to be on that side of the house, which. Over there. Still disaster. Still working on. It's <laughs> all our construction supplies. Yep, that will become a sunroom slash a mini kitchenette slash bar for like the pool area. Um, but this now is our kitchen. So super inviting when you come in the house. You guys remember when we painted these cabinets green? Um, and then here is our tile. I picked out like a cobblestone -y color. We were gonna go with a terracotta, but it was just not working for me. It was too much. So. I got like my old world feel with my um, cobblestone tile, but it's- And we found something special for there. <gasps> Copper vent hood. Got it on Marketplace, drove to the middle of nowhere to get it. I'm not gonna show you yet. yet. That'll be upcoming, but a copper vent hood. We got tile coming. Also, if you're an OG subscriber, you recognize that from our old house. We got it again. We love it so much. Yes, we do love that. That is from West Elm. I tried, looked high and low for a new light fixture, but I was like, I still love that one. So we got it again. Um, yeah, so we've really done a lot in here and this kitchen is now fully functioning where for, if you guys were following along all summer, we were without a kitchen. So it's just so nice to have a kitchen again. Um, we just have to finish all the like finishing detail touches. We're gonna add in some wood shelving and something like, like that. So when we built this island, we purposefully left it blank down here so we could do a really cool tile accent. We ended up going with something a little more modern, um, but it has some variations to the blacks and the grays, so it looks kind of like handcrafted tile. Um, so that's gonna be in a very soon upcoming video. So we're gonna be doing our tile down here. I think it's gonna be really cool contrasting with this. I wanted to add in some natural raw wood. So we got these bar stools. Um, so I'm really trying hard to do some modern, but also some really old world feel. 
So my sister gave us this gorgeous piece of leaded glass we're gonna put up here. Um, our kitchen right now is pretty modern and the original goal was to really make it charming and just have a lot of character. So we're adding that back in, but, excuse you, but we're starting super modern and then we're gonna add in all that charm. So it starts here. It even has like weathered green paint to match our cabinets. Good job. Living room now connects to the kitchen. It looks great in here. Uh, we took down a lot of walls. We're gonna reiterate that. Quite impressive if I do say so myself. <laughs> uh, but this just, it feels so open in here yet there's still some character. Uh, it's really cool. The whole main floor is this unfinished oak that we finished ourselves. It was a huge project. Uh, but it looks great. Uh, we also recently, at least I did, this is one of the th behind the scenes things, but these sliders were really old and nasty. So I replaced two sliding doors uh, with brand new ones. Uh, that needed to be done before winter. There was also some leaks in the basement because of the old ones. So uh, that was something kind of you would never notice on a video, but it was a big project to do. Um, we also hired a plumber to put a gas log in our fireplace. So now, ah, come on. There it is. We have a gas fireplace so we can turn it on uh, whenever we want heat or ambiance, so. your sweatshirt. <laughs> Thank you. You must like that color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good job. Mm -hmm. oh, it's stressful. It's looking good. So one of my favorite projects of this whole house is this tiny little bathroom. Come on in. So we wanted this to be just funky and fun, but also kind of moody and vintage. So we added in so much fun stuff. The tile is from Lowe's. So we added in just funky wallpaper, these kind of vintage looking sconces. Um, we got this off is like an old secretary desk that we took the bottom of off of and made it into a vanity. Just a lot of really cool, unique pieces in here. The green, I just, I've always wanted to paint a ceiling of a room. You guys have probably seen that. It's like really popular right now. So we painted the entire room green, including the ceiling. And it kind of, it is definitely darker in here, but it like just draws you in and feels so cozy. So love it. Um, Jamie did all the Wayne's coating. So there's a lot of little details in this room that we spent a lot of time on, but I think it just really helps it all come together. Um, these doorknobs we got throughout the house. These are just from Amazon, but don't they look old and pretty? I'll link those below. They're so, so pretty. I love just all these little details coming together in our home. So the really cool thing about our front door is that from the inside, it is so beautiful. It just adds in a nice warm wood touch, but it contrasts with our light oak floors. It's just like my favorite part of the whole house, inside and out, so pretty. I love all the light it lets into. So if you want to follow me on over to our dining room. This wall we took out too. Yes. Right? Cut that out. So many walls. But it still feels like separated in here, but it's like open. It's love it. We haven't actually done a ton in here except for take out a lot of cabinetry and wallpaper and make it all fresh and clean. Add in, in our light fixture. We did redo this table. I found these chairs <gasps> on Marketplace and we recovered them. They're gorgeous, they're very anthropology-esque, but I got them for very cheap. So the plan in here, as you can see my swatches on this wall, green, which Jamie has vetoed, no more green in this house because there's a lot of green. So I might go with more of a grayish, beigeish green. What is that? <laughs> we'll see, I don't know. <laughs> brown? <laughs> brown, no. I'm not actually sure on color yet, but I might do the same thing where I like paint the ceiling in here, everything. I'm adding in tons of molding everywhere. I want molding. Molding just adds so much texture and richness to a home. Like even if you live in a newer home and you add in molding, it's just like levels it up. Who's doing that? Are you doing that or me? 
Well, I'd like to learn. So I'm I, think, gonna, I think I'm going to have you do that one. I'm going to try. I want to learn. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing the molding. It's going to be good. So this room will be a lot more just like probably darker, moody, kind of draw you in, similar to the bathroom. But right now it's a bright white space because we just wanted to get it clean and fresh in here to start. Um, I might even add like a mural wallpaper thing. <laughs> I got lots of ideas. So this room will be upcoming, but for now it's just fresh and clean. And then this room, as you can see, this is, is real life here. Real. Real life tool organization. <laughs> this is our this is our tools. Yes. Um, this room will it used to be the old kitchen. It's very small. So this will become our sunroom. I want to do a lot of like glazed tile work in here with a little bar kitchenette. I want to do a LaCroix on tap with a fridge and a sink. This overlooks the pool. So this is going to be a really fun room. Um, uh, yeah, there you go. Got it. <laughs> So this is going to be a really fun room when we, um, when you come in from the pool and there's going to be like drinks and snacks, but you can also like sit in here and enjoy coffee and look out at the backyard. The reason we're saving it to last is because this wall is going to be moved two feet this way right? as well. So it's going to get smaller yet because our mudroom and laundry room is on the other side. We're trying to get more space over there. Sorry for... Welcome to the final reveal of the Stately Tutor. Come on in. So we have been in this house a whole year now and a lot has changed. If you guys remember, these stairs were carpeted, there was tile in here, but we wanted to keep a lot of the original features while still making it look clean and modern and new. So we painted this railing but kept it the same so it still has those nice curves um, and kind of that old feature while still looking modern and nice. We took up all the tile in here and there's wood floors throughout and this is actually my favorite feature of the whole house. If you guys saw it or followed along, Jamie found this on market on Facebook Marketplace in Chicago. So he drove three and a half hours for me to pick this guy up, but also he spent probably what, 50 hours sanding it? A lot. Um, I mean like every little crevice, he was out there late at night when it was cold and raining, just like scraping away. The chickens are always pecking at the door to come in. So this entryway is really just welcoming and inviting. And what's really cool about this house is we changed the entire layout. So my dream for this house is to actually make this front family room our kitchen. This is um, a newly this is a newly developed idea. Yes, Jamie's not as sold on it. So let me know in the comments below if you like it. But this room is really tall and it's also just a lot bigger than our current kitchen. And our current kitchen would become like a sunroom of sorts overlooking the pool. So when we first moved in, the kitchen was on the opposite side of the house, but I wanted it right here. <laughs> so Jamie was like, we can do that. So we did. So I may have said we can do that, but I didn't really know in my heart if we actually could. So, uh, but we got really lucky and we were able to take down some walls and make this space really big. To take these walls down, we had to put in three main beams. Um, Sarah and I demoed out all the drywall and stuff to save some money. Uh, so this was a family room and then this was like another living room over here, like their TV room. Uh, but there was a hallway in the middle that made it totally disjointed. There was like these teeny doorways and we didn't really want or need two living rooms. So we decided to make this uh, room with the tall ceilings here, our kitchen, and make it just really kind of grand uh, when you came in the front door. But taking this out really made our design dreams come true. So uh, we're really glad we did, but this house still does have some nice separation between like the dining room, um, and the staircase in the middle kind of just makes it still have that old feel. We wanted to keep a lot of those rustic, older touches, as you can see. This whole project was DIY, do it ourselves, me and Sarah, uh, with the exception of putting in the, the support beams and then the countertops. Everything else you see here, me and Sarah did. So I'm pretty proud of that, it looks great. So when I designed this kitchen, I really wanted it to feel old, but still modern, and I wanted it to have some color. Um, our last kitchen, which I love, but it was super modern, ultra black and white. So I wanted it just to be a totally different character feeling. So um, we went with the green cabinets. And then our copper hood is my favorite part of the kitchen. I got that off Facebook Marketplace off of an old farmhouse. 
Um, and it's just this beautiful old feature that I really love the color. It kind of ties in that natural rustic feeling. Um, but then our appliances are ultra modern. So, and we also have this nice waterfall going on with our countertops, kind of those harsh edges with the softer pieces of like the round glass and the brass, the roundness of this, like there's some softness going on, but also some really nice modern touches too. So I picked all the pieces in this house individually, one by one, most of them from Facebook Marketplace. Um, like this piece here, it was just a piece I really fell in love with and it fits really nicely in this space. Um, it holds some glassware and some baking supplies, things like that. So this kitchen isn't necessarily huge, but it feels really big and it's just, it's such a good space for us. I really am happy with how it turned out. It is even better than I could have imagined. So um, the tile work is really cool. I'll link that below if you guys are interested. It's like an old cobblestone-y feel. Each tile is different and I just loved like the roundedness and kind of like the distressed edges of it. I just thought it was so pretty. I had, um, do, I had to do that twice actually. That's true. The yeah. first time we put this up, it all started to fall down. DIY fail. The glue did not stick for some reason. Don't know why. We put it on top of Kills Oil Primer and it didn't stick. So Jamie had to put tile backer up and redo the whole project. So it took us a little longer, but that's how it goes with these projects. Um, another piece of this kitchen that's like my favorite, come back around this way. <laughs> so this tile work below is just, it's really modern, but it also is like that kind of cafe style feel, like European. So I'm just really happy with the different elements that kind of play off of each other with this like rustic wood and then this modern tile. But I love that they're all different shades. It's just so pretty. So um, every piece that we picked out, we picked out like one at a time. It's not like I laid this all out and was like, I got it. It kind of was like we slowly picked each piece. So now this is our main living room, uh, which we are super excited about. We love it in here and we spend most of our time in here. This room was a lot more work actually than it looks like the before and after. I scraped all the ceilings. There was like a texture on there. Um, putting up this beam was quite the project because I had to kind of cut around the rocks. Really just a lot of a lot of work went in this room. Originally we had talked about maybe doing like a German schmear or changing this rock fireplace, but we really felt like it uh, kept that original character of the home. Uh, so we decided to just leave it original. Um, this home, even though it looks like an old, old Tudor, it was built in uh, the late 70s. So it's really not that old. and we want to kind of add a little bit more character back in than there even was originally. So which leads me to the biggest project that we did, which was the floors. Um, you guys saw there was two or three videos on that. That was by far the biggest and most labor intensive project of this whole house. So um, come on back over here. We bought the cabin grade wood from Lumber Liquidator, so it's basically like their throw out wood, um, and we turned it into this beautiful masterpiece that you see below. We didn't put any stain on the wood, we just did a natural finish on it, um, and it really has a lot of character, which I think adds to this house. Um, and we also left this, uh, this is another character piece, it's our cold air return. Uh, because we took the wall out, we still needed a cold air return, and rather than paying an HVAC person to move the entire duct system in the basement, we just uh, cut the floor a little bigger and put that in. So there was a wall yep. right wall. here. Big wall. wall. So this bathroom here is our guest bathroom and we want it to be super unique and funky, but also still like have some of that character and old worldness to it. So I definitely think we achieved that by using this old dresser here as the sink vanity. The tile is like my favorite tile in the world. I will link that below, it's beautiful. Um, but then we did some really funky wallpaper and just kind of had fun with it. It has some really cool features with the light fixtures and the handles and the faucet. So I um, just kind of loved seeing how this all came together. We will definitely be linking a lot of products that we used in our renovation below. So if you're curious about anything, go check that out. Come on over back this way to our dining room. This was uh, originally the dining room, but it had a lot of cabinetry that kind of closed the space in. Lots of wallpaper that we ripped down, a new light fixture. Everything is new in here. Um, we ended up kind of keeping it more simple in this room. Um, we had lots of big grand plans of like cabinetry and 
all sorts of things, but we ended up just kind of keeping it simple and really liking it that way, feeling like it looked really rich and glamorous. So um, we added in this trim work over here, which just added some nice detail. This all is Marketplace finds right here. This table we redid, which is kind of like pretty chunky and cool looking. These chairs are very like anthropology inspired. <gasps> I got them for all four of them for $150 in Marketplace. We redid the seats on them. <gasps> One of my favorite finds ever. So pretty. Um, which brings us to our last, do you want me to show this yeah, part? Sure. This room is not finished. <laughs> this will be our sunroom slash secondary kitchen of sorts. The pool is right off of this. And then this, behind this wall here will be our mud room that will be extended a little bit. <laughs> so this room still has some work and it has kind of become our collection of tools and junk room. But that is what we are working on last and next, I suppose. So this room is not finished, but here it is. So this will be like our drink station with coffee, food, things like that for the pool in summertime. This will be a very used room, but right now it's probably the least important, so we have saved it till last. So we've been living here for about a year now, uh, which is crazy to think about. Lots of memories already in this house, Definitely. and we, we absolutely love how it's turned out so far. Yeah, I think we are here for the long haul. This is like my dream home, so. We are super excited to continue to just make memories here and enjoy the property. We have some more projects coming up, some extra little things we're doing places, but for now it's super livable and just really how we like it and want it. Yeah, and other houses we've renovated in the past, we haven't really done them exactly to how we want because we knew someday we're gonna be moving on to something else. But I think with this house, we kind of knew uh, this is a house we're gonna be in for a long time, so we really wanted to make it exactly how we wanted to. Yes. Know? Turned out awesome. So. Yes, make your house for yourself. So if you want to watch the entire playlist of this house from start to finish, I will link that below so you guys can check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you next time. Bye.